Hey, I'm the Calathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019. This is Classics Rider episode number 41. We're at the National Championships for the USA. I'm the only one for my team here, so I have to ride solo. It looks like I'm facing a negative one race day condition. Why can I not turn this over? Really? You're, no? No option to turn this around? I was just going to say that I'm not a sprinter. However, I actually have a little bit of a chance. Between Sean Bennett, Taylor Finney being the best that the U.S. has to offer, I actually do have a little bit of a chance today. Taylor Finney is only a 71 in the sprint and doesn't have great acceleration. Uh, for Mark, is like myself, uh, Sean Bennett... Yeah, even he's just a 69. So I actually do have a chance in this race, even though this is your sprint profile. It's undulating a little bit, but it is very much sprint profile. Now, why I can't use... Hmm. I've had this thing forever, and I finally have a chance to use it, and yet it won't let me use it. Thanks, game. Thanks. Right. Uh, what is the point of having that freaking turn around your negative race day condition twice a year thing if the one time you finally have a chance to benefit from it, you don't make it available? Uh, you just missed the eye roll, but there was a definite eye roll. By the way, it's long and flat. Let's go ahead and get to the end. Didn't want to show anything besides the end, but here I am two minutes behind the peloton after a crash with Taylor Eisenhart that has taken me out. So uh, not getting any support from him, but it looks like we are pulling back the time just a minute behind now. So. It is early enough in this race that, there we go, we have recovered. And we are back to the front. Still 35 kilometers to go. Peloton, uh, we're seeing a new brake trying to form, new riders going off the front. Could be dangerous, because here's the thing. Usually, the AI, they take into account who is the favorite before determining whether they should put riders on the front to chase down a break. There are plenty of times where no team outside of the favorite is willing to put riders forward. It does happen, but there are many occasions where it doesn't happen. So only the favorites team would put a rider for him. Now, one thing that the game does not take into account is how many riders that front team, that favorite team, has on it on that particular day. So what we have is a case of a situation where you very often end up, not very often, it's very infrequent, but it happens on national road races like this one. Where instead of running a team, you have one rider or two riders or four riders instead of a full team. Since that's not a consideration, you very often have a race like this one, as we are losing riders off the back now, just 27 left in the peloton. There's a breakaway in the leading group! The other teams expect the lead team to chase it down, but if you only have one rider in the lead team, that rider is not going to chase it down by themselves and sacrifice themselves for every other team. So it's happened many times where a breakaway can end up winning by 10 plus minutes, 15, 20 minutes, because no team will take up the chase outside of the front team, and the front team doesn't have the riders to make the chase themselves, and yeah. Done deal. 16k to go. Four riders off front. 27 seconds. Luckily that didn't happen today. 
And now we actually have a breakaway of seven riders. Taylor Finney among those trying to get up to that group. So they're trying to turn it into the breakaway taking the win. It's nine riders now. No, now it's together. 34 riders. There you go. 13K to go. Just about out of water here, but I should make it. Three again. And Finney is going. He is wasting his chance to sprint today by being a Barrador instead. And I just don't think that those three riders will have enough. Nine riders could. 11k to go. Okay, we'll definitely pull back three riders. There you go, down to 10k. We are starting to lose some riders out the back, so the chase is coming pretty hot. Summerhill nearly bringing us back together with Finney, Daniel, and Bennett. The other favorite, Bennett, there. Okay, really got to watch out for these guys. 32 riders now. EF coming back on the front. Seven and a half K to go. Pace has slowed down quite a bit here. But there's an acceleration as Sean Bennett goes off the front. Six K, gel. Here comes another acceleration. More riders trying to get off the front instead of chase it back. No, there you go. Almost back together. 13 second gap. Owen accelerates. Ah, uh, he's got too big of a gap. He might win it. Sean Bennett might win it. There's only 11 of us chasing and it's 3K to go. I wanna be on the front and I'm gonna attack this little uphill as soon as we round this corner. Sixteen seconds. There goes my sprint. Here comes the actual sprint, and now I've got nothing left to sprint. And he is gonna hang on. Sean Bennett's gonna claim the victory. Colin Joyce for Mark. Finney, I still take fifth. And Garderin, Barta, Carpenter, Daniel, Blevins. Odd race. Nobody was willing to chase him down that last time, so I had to go early instead of sprint at the end. Used up the energy to pull him back, essentially for everybody else, but for no one, because he won. Only by a couple bike lengths, but it was enough. No national championship jersey this year, but of course, flat profile like this, there wasn't any climbs to it. If I get that sprint into the low 70s, I could actually win here in the U.S. this race. And I could have won today if it was just a pure sprint there at the end. I would have had enough pace. I would have been able to do it. Uh, but the fact that Bennett was riding solo almost 30 seconds out in front, we wouldn't have been two bike lengths behind him. It would have been second that I would have been riding for instead of fifth. And I was thinking about the win, not about second so I don't mind that I lost a few positions that I probably would have had oh the team wanted a top three I thought they wanted a top five well okay fine whatever Ustarei Schoenfart is next. It has two punchy stages. We'll focus on those. High speed towards the end of stage four here in the Tour of Austria. Enough time to get a little intro. There's a couple little punchy sections, so that's why we ride here just in case. Peloton shrinking, breakaway groups already been caught. We're down to 42 riders in the Peloton. Pace has been pretty hot. Now, team objective is to win the stage. But also, more than that, it's points classification, even though I don't 
have really any points in that. I have six. I'm to finish in 10th on a sprint stage, quick simming. But it's also to be in the break for the final 60k. I've already missed half that objective because I'm not in the break. Uh, but realistically, this stage is all about the final climb for someone like me. So having as much energy as I can at the base of that climb which is looking pretty good. Looks like I'm about to recover. There you go, full strength now as we head towards that final climb, 22K to go. So I focus on that final climb. I have the pace for it. However, it's that mountain climbing ability through the first half of that climb that I worry about because I cannot go 95 from the base to the top. I will not have enough energy for that. I can certainly win it pure pace compared to others but I definitely can't attack right away at the start. So how long can I hang in there? How much energy does it waste at the base of the climb until I begin my attack? 60 riders, 8k to go. We'll save our gel until we're at about, I don't know, four, three and a half. It's very steep. That's gonna take a little while to get to the top. Here comes the 5k banner. The riders are entering the last five kilometers of the stage. Definitely going under four. I think I might go to about three six. Oh yeah, here's the base of the climb. There we go, three six. So it's three and a half k. It's not steep yet. But here comes the initial attacks already. Look how far backward I have gone in just the first few hundred meters. Getting bogged down here within the group. Wait. Those are the team leaders, so now they're giving me orders. Okay, 1.8. It's time to move. Here we go. Here's my pace. Can I get through the crowd to the front? It's going to be steepest at the end. Here we go. 1K. 1K to go. And there we go. To the front. 700 meters. 95, I will ride away from these guys a little bit. I'm going to run out of red bar before the end. 300 meters. And there goes the mad burst for the final sprint. Katana. There's a mountain guy for you. He's going to take the victory swift. Yeah, uh, it just uses my energy too quick beforehand. Connor Swift second. I do get third on the stage, but just... Can't ride away from those guys, but also can't maintain the position. It was a weird situation that I was in there that I'm burning too much energy. So 85, I'm using my mountain rating, and I'm slow, and I'm burning my energy. I can't pull away unless I go 95, but I go 95, I have a tremendous pace. But the energy fades very quick because it's very steep, and 3.5K is the length. So I need that stupid mountain rating to come up. The hills rating is very good, but I'm really, really limiting myself with that mountain rating being so weak. And the resistance at just 70. Stamina, cobble, the hills, the flat, they're great. Acceleration's great. But the mountain rating and the resistance. If I can pick those two up, I could really start to win a lot of races. And I, I don't need a mountain rating of 80 or anything like that. I just need it a little healthier. 73, 74, maybe a 75 would be ideal. Even the resistance, get that up to a 74, 75. And we could start winning a lot more often than we do now. One more opportunity in this stage race for a hills finish. Probably not going to be as good as this opportunity was. Certainly was in the right position, capable, but that mountain rating just really hurt me in the end. Into the final 40 kilometers. Attack by Tony Martin. Breakaway just over a minute ahead, so they're now starting to attack themselves. Jumbo Visma set up with uh, three riders in the break. Not sure how they pulled that one off, but back in the peloton, there are 110 riders here in most of the field. 
We have lost some. Not quite sure how. One little climb at the beginning, but otherwise it's been a very straightforward day. Big gaps behind us now. 30k to go. Again, I'm the favorite for today. But unlike stage 4, this is stage 8, by the way. This is the final stage. So we'll see the final standings before long. Uh, Quintana is favored on time. Verveki is second. Not the strongest field here. Even Nibali is all the way up in fifth place right now for us, for Bahrain Marina. I'm looking pretty strong as we approach the end here. I don't have Nibali or Potavivo for support, but I do have others. They are thinking that I can claim the stage. They're expecting me to win it. We'll see what we can do. Small breakaway is now caught. 114 riders riding towards the end. Final 15k. The profile on this one. Not as bad as the other one, so we'll see. This could cater to me a little bit better. 11k to go. The climb, yes, it's a little bit longer, but it's not as intense of a climb, meaning my mountain rating won't hurt me as bad on this one. And I can maintain my 95, my acceleration, my hills rate, a bit longer. Remember, the divide between mountain and hill is 85 to 95 with a split depending on the percentage in between them. Okay, here we go. Coming up on the climb, 4.8. Let's go ahead and use the gel. This is not going to take that long. So as long as I'm near the front, I'm in a good spot. I have these guys, uh, Falassi and Caruso. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Falassi and Caruso. And instead of doing what they're doing, you guys are going to do this for me. So we're going to go Caruso, and then we're going to go Falassi. And they both have pretty good hills ratings, and we're going to push 95. And you can see it's only doing just a little bit of damage to me. 3.5k to go, and Falassi is nearly done. And there you go. Down to 35 riders, and now Caruso. This is good, this is good. I'm actually getting a little team support here, and we're going to go 97 for you. And then... You're going to also transcend yourself. Uh, transcend yourself. Thank you. And so here we go. We see attacks at the front, but they don't do damage. And look how fresh I am now. So then 2.8k, 2.6k. Uh, I'll go a little bit softer than 95, but this is going to move me right to the front because of my speed. 32 riders. And now I'm down to that stupid mountain rating for a little bit. But it's not doing the damage. 1.3k. Here's where I can accelerate. Oh, come on! This. This might have just cost me the win. The mouse wheel did nothing when that popped up, so I didn't speed up like I was supposed to. Okay, 300 meters, 300 meters, 200 meters, there's Quintana, it's Quintana or I, I've got no, no red bar left, it did cost me the win, I'm going to get second, Victory for Nero Quintana. Rebecca gets third, <sighs> Formulo, Oliveira, Ghana, but again, this is low resistance, so smaller yellow bar, which also means smaller red bar and that red bar just went away really quick and with that low mountain rating it dipped into both of those things so again just biting me in the rear end love that shot though wow look at that how many times do they actually show you a stage where you've got a massive city in view in sight. I wonder if we rode through there. Guess I could find out. Did we come back that way? Or not cooperate. That's fine. <laughs> 
Alright, well, let's see what the final standings were. I'm pretty sure Quintana has won the whole thing as he just beat me on the stage, so I miss out again. I've taken a third and a second in this one. Can't even win in my strong suit against a less than stellar group. It's, it's the length of the climbs. If you haven't figured this out by now, anything less than about one and a half to two K, I can win every climb, beating everyone except for about Alaphilippe. But anything over about two K, regardless of how intense the climb is, my poor mountain rating just eats into my stamina and that I just don't have enough to attack at the end. I was out of red bar. If I had any red bar left whatsoever, I've got that thing won comfortably. Nibali takes 6th, he actually loses a spot. Pazzavio takes 13th, I took 27th, 13 minutes down. But Katana does take the win. I move up to 6th in the points classification, but Katana wins that as well. Thorau wins the KOM. He took 9th in the under 25s, despite not being in it at all. And we take third as a team, which is not a bad result, but it's still a poor result for taking second place in the stage. Here's my thought on this one. This is what I think they should do. Starting next year, of course, it will never be able to be changed for this year, but the development points, the progression, should be awarded in two separate ways. First and foremost, what is your position and in various classifications, right? If you're leading points, if you're leading KOM, leading under 25s, should be points available for those, but mostly what is your GC position or stage position, right? Take second on a stage, you get X amount of points. You want to use Formula One point style, okay? 25 for first, 18, 15, and so on. So I would have had 18 points of progression for taking second. Or less for a stage race. Right? It's not the decisive. You get the overall, first and foremost. 25, 18, 15, overall. Stage is 10, 8, 6, 5, you know, something like that. Whatever. Whatever they dis determine it would be, that's fine. But that's your first. Then, the higher point totals, the bigger points, are bonuses that come with the team and, possibly, sponsor objectives. Right? Bring the sponsor objectives over to the pro cyclist mode. What races do they care about more? Which ones are you in? And trying to meet that sponsor objective. Pick it up bonuses and the manager satisfaction right but taking second should not be punished <laughs> you should not get just four points for finishing in second place that's just doesn't make sense it's a good result it's not the result you wanted but it's not a bad result second place is not bad Nobody hangs their head when Peter Sagan takes second place, or Philippe takes second place, or even Chris Froome for that matter. It's not a bad race when he takes second place, even if it's GC Tour de France, right? Oh, he didn't win. Well, of course, you're going to have to give it to whoever did win. They had a great race. He still had a good race. What's wrong with being on the podium? Nothing. So... I think position should be a factor in the points. It doesn't have to be a massive factor, but some sort of baseline score that you're going to get regardless. But then the team bonus is a thing. So if the team wanted you to win and you take second, it's like, okay, not a bad result, but not where we wanted you. So you have the base score, eight points if that's what it was, because it was only a stage and not... A classic and not GC. GC points awarded at the end. Worth more. Okay. 
different point evaluation based on a classic and depending on what type of classic right higher profile classic worth more similar to the way super prestige works seems like it would be an easy enough system to implement and do and would make much more sense the better you get the smaller your bonuses are going to end up being because the team has higher expectations they want more out of you but you still have that baseline score that's always going to be there bring points back into the game but then make it more you know it's only 300 to level up but bring points in there reward the writers for what they do make it harder to level up but at least reward the writers i don't know that that makes sense to me what do you think let me know in the comments below uh, i'm just running calendar right now and we've got a rest week here nothing going on let's see what it even is coming up uh san sebastian so cyclista san sebastian coming up in just over a week you know what uh i think i have time for one more maybe maybe not it's not that long of an episode right now uh Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, it's It says it's punchy and it's objective two stars. Again, what the objectives mean absolutely nothing in pro cyclist mode. So there's a way to bring that back in to being relevant. I don't see how this is punchy, though. I don't see how this favors me at all. Those climbs, they're not going to hurt anyone. 231k, that's going to hurt someone a lot more than those climbs are. I'll see you in the final kilometers. Let, let's just get to the end, because I just don't think those climbs are going to leave too many riders behind. It won't be a full peloton, but it'll be shrunk. There's a long ways to go in this one, but it's hard to pinpoint where the action may end up taking place in this race. Theoretically, your pure classics riders are the favorites, with myself right about fifth and the team objective right about fifth. So, do we have a chance? Can we get in the top five today? I think a lot of that comes down to these next couple of climbs, and that's why we're back so early. Now, the breakaway had seven riders. One of them crashed out of the race entirely. So, they are down to six. He is not back in the peloton. He is out of the race, and we've lost our first riders here on this first of the two big climbs of the day. And as we go over the top, most of the team struggling but nobody's lost yet and on this descent we might be able to get most of them back into a stronger position and really back to get water not the guy I would have sent back would have sent back like Fang Pazza Vivo keep nibbly fresh for the other climb here we go. Six riders in the break. Two minutes, 15 seconds gap. Here we go over a smaller, steep climb. Down no worth. And wow, just like that, there goes most of the field. Peloton down to 56. Nibbly, your job. Get up here. Protection. Help me get over this climb. He did not last long, but he gave me a little protection. 36 riders. Can I get over the top here still got a ways to go breakaway still has a minute <laughs> blinking blinking uh, and I'll make it over I'll make it over okay so 30 riders chasing the break I'll recover on the descent uh, I'm unfortunately riding solo though make sure we don't get dropped here Breakaways gap, at least their front run. They're they're pushing it out a bit, a minute and a half now. 30k to go. I mean that should be something we can do. We could catch them. Uh, Nibali is very tired, but he's back into the Peloton. Uh, though we've got another climb coming up here, and I have a feeling he's going to get lost. He will get dropped on this one again, but maybe not. There he 
we go, and we caught the breakaway. And he's dropped. For a moment. <laughs> and again. Okay. 31 riders. And we're starting to see the beginnings of the... Yep, here's Yates, Mahoric. So, late attacks. 20k to go. Riding solo from here to the end. While it's Moscon. Oh, 14 riders get away. Oh, that's going to be tough. Gaudu Vanderpool. That's all the favorites. All the favorites. Sivakov is still here. While Poles. Just Bear Woods is here. Bernal is here. Demoulon is here. Thomas. I'm not the only one. There's still some strength here. Let's pull these guys back. You guys, pull them back, please. <laughs> 18k to go. Come on. Bridge that gap. There's too many big names here for us to just give this one away. No, there's no chase. There's no chase. Look how weak it is. Gap's opening. It's going the wrong direction. Minute 23. I can't chase these guys down. Not coming from me. And it's now two minutes. It's going the wrong way. We are going to lose this. That's going to be your winning group. I missed the, uh, the little attack. Did not expect it at all. Was not in position to counter it. And now there's just too many riders. In fact, now we're not even considered anything close to a peloton. We're A3. Now we attack hard. Spielak, Hashimoto, Millard pushing. 6k to go. You guys gonna just cruise now? Nope, oh, somebody new picked up the pace a little bit, but we're 315 behind. Let's go. I'm gonna just try to attack this group, leave them behind. He snatched victory on that Juliet Alphilippe takes the win, so it absolutely did come from what I expected it to come from. Court Nielsen, Vanderpool, Mahorich, Yates, Ciccone, Gaudu, Roglic, Sedlacek, and Wellens. I take 15th, but I missed the split. And we didn't pull back. I would have tried to cover that gap right away, but I looked at the names in this group. And there was nothing but talent around me. Bernal, De Moulin, Mulberger, Formolo. You look at the other guys that just finished at the top of the standings right next to me in the group that I just left behind, and you figure there is too much talent in that group for us not to bridge that 10-second gap. I was wrong. <sighs> Dead wrong. Bad, bad result. All right, well, here we are. It is now after the 1st of August, so the silly season has begun. Hasn't gotten silly yet, though. No signings in the first few days. Alaphilippe wins solo, too. Yeah, I left those guys behind by 20 seconds, 21 seconds, but that was a pretty big gap to those guys out front. Missed out. No points at all for getting 15th. Okay, so Jumbo Visma's budget down, and it's small to begin with, so that could hurt them. EF Education, their budget's going to go up, but the transfer market has opened. And my contract situation, well, it looks like this. Trek might offer us something. The interest, it's not green, but it's definitely up there. It's not far off from where Barry and Marita is. Now, they want to give us 
they want to give me a lot of points to stay with Barry and Maruta. And that's not a terrible idea. Trek's only going to give me 88, but we're, we're talking about a much stronger team where I could actually get some support in some races. Van Barl, Mola, Dick and Kolb. Matthews is here, but it's Matthews, right? He's not helpful. Uh, Padoon. It's not the end of the world if we stay with Barney Marita. So if they offer a contract and I get to the expiring day and I haven't heard from Trek, I might accept that contract. My struggles this season have been more on the fact that I'm at the World Tour against the best classics writers, and I'm not the best classics writer, but my team expects me to be. So I'm having a really hard time picking up points in order to level up to truly become what is expected of me. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm a Cathlon Gamer. 14th. And remember, I'm aiming for the best of the best. So if you're ready to join me on my journey, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. And Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye for now.